All right, welcome to the Dales Report. And had to be joined today with the CEO of Adastro Holdings, Michael Forbes, joins us to the podcast. Michael, how are things? Great. Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah. You to be well, here. Where are you? You're in Vancouver, correct? Vancouver, yeah. How's life out west? All peachy? It's kind of getting back to normal. Yeah, there's, you know, there's, it's, we had a little uptick in COVID, obviously, like everywhere else at yeah. the end of summer. But, uh, so it's mask on everywhere. But, um, you know, it, we never really did fully shut down like our friends out in Toronto there. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's livable for sure. Stay on the West Coast. Yeah. Lots of shutdowns here. Well, listen, we wanted to have you on. There's been a steady uh, stream of news for your company, Adastra Holdings. So before we get into all the specifics of business, for my viewers, explain to us who you are, the company itself, and why this company should take notice as far as the investment community is concerned. So uh, th thanks. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pharmacist and uh, I have an MBA as well. So that's, that's my background. And I started building businesses right out of uh, high school, actually. Wow. University and I've been a serial entrepreneur the whole time. Okay. Um, I've got a specialty in drug formulation and development, and um, I currently run a number of labs right now in the pharmaceutical space. Um, and I, it's very second nature for me to make drugs. Um, mm -hmm. What pharmacists do is they, they they're very good at taking uh, raw materials, uh, drug materials, and then formulating them into something that's dose dose specific and easy to get into the body okay and so cannabis psychedelics it's, it's very second nature to me um i have a lot of experience building clinics operating clinics um construction i have a lot of different um construction projects where i've built drug stores retail stores for cannabis um and industrial parks i have a i, have a, I am a licensed producer called okay. sitka weedworks okay so it's a very large scale craft cannabis um project and adastra is kind of like my backyard it's a very uh very well built large scale um industrial extraction lab okay with the analytics to go with it so uh we we can we have hplc testing machines there um i'm just very it's kind of when cannabis became legalized and a thing it was kind of like it, it sprouted up in my backyard so i'm very comfortable in this setting so I'm super excited to bring more revenue sources into uh, Adastra and, and obviously the psychedelics is a hot thing right now and yeah. it's right up probably to be able to add more revenue to there. It's amazing how much this industry has gained such popularity in the last 12 months, does it not? Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I actually feel that we've got a bit of ways to go with the legality um, yeah. changes. Um, and I, I do feel that um, we are going in the in the right direction, but I, yep. I I'm taking more of a cautious approach where I'm adding accretive revenue to already existing infrastructure. So I just got I'll be doing cultivation at, at my LP. I've got approval for that for a dealer's license. So I'll be able yep. to cultivate and grow there. And then I'll ship it over to a Dastra to do the formulations and make the actual finished drug products. And then in the clinics, I'll be able to retail it. So wow. I already have all the pieces in place where I don't have to spend, you know, any money um, to get wow. already where a lot of my competitors have to spend tens of millions of dollars and pay for a whole bunch of staff and PhDs. I don't have any of that problem. It's it's already all there. So, wow. so pretty exciting. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest difference extraction wise? Like, I guess, market potential between cannabis versus psychedelics. Are they similar or do you see even a bigger opportunity within the psychedelic industry? I actually, I actually think cannabis is still much bigger. Yeah. It's, it's more used on a, on a much more regular basis. Um, uh, and it's, it's got a wider um, reach right now. So um, I actually feel that cannabis is still a much bigger market than psychedelics. Mm -hmm. However, um, being specialized in, in certain psychedelics and being able to deliver that um, proprietary product to the patient, um, I feel I'm very well suited to do it and with little, little out, outlay of cash. And I think that's going to be a big, big difference. When you see the tide come out, um, mm -hmm. you're going to see who's swimming without the shorts. That's as great. as quoted by Warren Buffett. So, you know, I'm, I'm being real cheap and cheerful going through this, making sure that we are adding a creative revenue 
and keeping our costs really managed going through this, waiting for, for the laws to change. So you recently filed an application to Health Canada for a dealer's license. It's been accepted under the Controlled Drugs and Substance Act and currently is undergoing formal review. And if approved, this would then allow you to perform several functions necessary, as you said, including the viability of your new psychedelic business. So walk us through what this means for your psychedelic division and for the investors in the near and medium term. Well, I think that... Um... I'm very confident that we will get the dealer's license. Like I qualify as a QA um, and I'm on the application and I have multiple levels of, of like I'm, I'm already a licensed producer. So the security uh, details are already met at my other facility. Okay. And obviously Adastra has that, they, they have their sales license as well. So um, it's just a formality to go through and make sure that we can satisfy with Health Canada, uh, which we do. Um, so it's just a matter of when we'll get this dealer's license. And in the background, I'm already prepping. Um, you know, I already have the scientists there. We have um, a really great team of, of chemists and scientists that, that already yeah. have experience formulating. Okay. Um, and I can drive that ship to get proprietary molecules very effectively. And then we already have the sales channel to be able to, to, sell, to sell those through to the patients. So I'm anticipating that in the next six months, we'll be having some real, real, real traction. And we'll uh, like, if you look at uh, other market caps of some of our um, other companies out there in the psychedelic space, they have some tremendous market caps and they mm. have, but, but they also have a lot of debt and a lot of uh, uh, monthly burn. Well, whereas we don't have any of that. Yeah, revenue is the big question mark, right? And people really don't understand what the revenue model looks like and when it will happen. But from what I'm learning is while we wait for approval from Health Canada, already plan of action. So in addition to what you said, like what sort of background preparations are being conducted as, uh, you know, in order to hit, I guess, the ground running as soon as the dealer's license is awarded? Well, it's pretty exciting for me because we have almost everything already in place. Um, you know, we've already been, you know, we, we already have the machines and the capabilities to extract and formulate these products. So really what's all that's in our way is just the legal framework for the dealer's license. Right. Uh, you know, so, and again, I want to stress that as, as I'm, you know, we're, we're, as we're getting into this psychedelics, we're able to cash flow our way through it because mm -hmm. of their already existing profitable businesses. So Sitka is already profitable in the cannabis space, right? What I'm doing is taking out some rooms there and adding in, in, uh, in, in the psychedelics, uh, you know, growing psilocybin. The clinics are already profitable. We're already, we're already seeing, um, you know, we have 4,000 patients in Perceive MD already, and it's very profitable wow. business. And so, you know, we sent out an email the other day to some of our patients saying, would you be interested in this service? And we got flooded with inbound. Wow. So our marketing costs and going out there and trying to uh, retain new patients is we don't have that cost. We already have it all in house, right? So I've already done all the legal framework to have these patients start doing psilocybin or psychedelic assisted therapy with our already existing staff. We already have the clinicians and everybody on right. staff in a profitable business. Mm -hmm. Same thing in Astra. We already have, you know, the the P, the PhDs and scientists are already on salary, right? And we've already got a profitable business there at Astra. Like when you see our our uh, our next quarter come out, it's it's pretty amazing. We're gonna be one of the one of the few cannabis companies out there that's already profitable. And so I'm just I'm just merely adding to existing profitable businesses with staff already in place, more revenue streams. Do you see more comp? I was going to say, do you see more, I guess, companies that are in the cannabis extraction world doing something like what you're doing right now? But what opportunities this present to you, knowing that you're, I guess, you know, uh, first to the market to be doing a lot of this stuff? I, well, my, my goal, like, so I, I, being a serial entrepreneur, I've always been the last guy to eat at the table um, at the end of the day. So I'm very familiar with running businesses um to get into a profitable state and that is okay. my my sole purpose right now is to really grow adastra and reduce the expenses so that we are profitable yeah going through this and I think, you know so i my, my goal to answer your question is to be the first profitable cash flowing debt-free psychedelic company out there
It's great. So an extractor of the psychedelic substances such as psilocybin, MDMA, DMT, or and others, which is very, very interesting. So when I look, uh, when I see, I guess, the outlook of this medicinal side of psychedelics, um, do you envision psychedelic extractions as having a big future for this industry? And if so, why? I think that, I think that formulating proprietary molecules for patient use um, will be big. I know that a lot of companies are going down the biotech and going through trials and um, getting their, their, um, their, you know, their DINs or their um, yeah. ability to actually create a pharmaceutical drug. I actually feel that that is a, um, not a mistake, but I think it's a hard path to go down that's very expensive. And I believe that most patients that I've seen that are into cannabis or psychedelics, they're already into alternative me uh, medicine and they like natural. And so as a pharmacist, there's very pivotal when you'd have people are either totally into Western medicine or totally into Eastern medicine. And they don't typically blend that well. Um, and so I feel that more psychedelic patients will want to try natural occurring psilocybin and natural sources. Yeah. So being able to formulate that into from a natural source, I think that is um, uh, going to be where, you know, I, I, I want to focus. I think that that is more of what patients will want. Are you seeing any increase in market requests for extraction formulation right now in this space? Well, you're seeing it already in the, in the legacy market. You're seeing yeah. a lot of, uh, uh, you know, people are, you know, grinding it up in their blender on their, in their kitchen and, and make, making their own branded, you know, psychedelics. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think that where it needs to go is have a much more standardized you know, pharmaceutically done procedural uh, drug that um, has exactly what the dose of, um, you know, psilocybin and, and, and the other, and, and, and or, or other molecules into that dose specific uh, allotment, whether it's a tincture, of, a thin strip of capsule or what, whatever, it's got to be measured precisely for, for patient use. Yeah. So I think that, you know, you're going to see it kind of get fancy like cannabis did, you know, where you used to be able to buy a cannabis in a Ziploc sandwich bag. And now it's really fancy in all of our health Canada, you know, like adult proof packaging, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you're going to see it get fancy and being much more pharmaceuticalized.